and uh, to help us understand what's pushed crowds onto the streets across the U.S., we're now joined live by John Wellington Ennis, a filmmaker and also a contributor to the Huffington Post. Uh, John, thank you very much indeed for your time. So um, earlier on, we, we just heard from the U.S. president who said he understood the frustration of the people. So uh, but with the protests hitting a third week now, do you think the people are actually trying to achieve something here? Or is this just more of a statement? Oh, I think it's the beginning of something that's going to be going for the long haul. I think that uh, Obama's reluctance to acknowledge this mirrors his reluctance to pick up on the breadth of the oil spill and the outrage there. Um, I think that uh, while this may seem like um, an act in uh, demonstrations and, and signs to a lot of people, this is, as your previous uh, report led into this, uh, uh, these are very warmed. And while the media keeps trying to do a, uh, a quiz and try to see how much they can get them off uh, onto some talking points, it's really much more than that. There's the reality of what people are living in. Protesters appear to have a number of different goals, but how strongly united do you think they really are? Well, I think the, uh, the protests are so united that they didn't even need a common purpose to be stated. As I wrote in the Up and Post, I think this was the one protest where you could ask someone why they were there, and they would reply, why the F do you think? Um, I, th I think that uh, there's such a common frustration, and there's been so many uh, patient uh, stages by the U.S. people to wait for reform efforts, and that goes back to 2009 when Obama had a chance and instead focused on sort of, I think, like a vanity, uh, a vanity project like health care, which is just going to get kicked down by the Supreme Court. Also, protesters were heard chanting slogans about Egypt's revolution. Is it possible that anything of that magnitude could take place in the U.S. from your point of view? Well, I think when people are showing up in public, what they're doing is they're lending power to other people so that when they recognize their presence, other people know that uh, they're not alone. And I think that more than that, and more than the uh, the fact that these are the new leaders, these young have taken the only means left to them, which is the streets. Uh, I think even more than that, when you go into protest and when you appear in public in support of a cause, you don't know what ripples you're creating. One of the uh, one of the groups I'm following in my film, Pay to Play, is the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC. And they draft legislation that is uh, conveniently made for corporations and handed off to state and federal legislatures. This only came to light this year, and it was because of protests in Wisconsin and then protests in Cincinnati that uh, a member of ALEC let out over 800 documents of pre-written legislation. He reached out to the Alex demonstrators and said, I believe in your cause, I've had a change of heart. And so once you're out there, you don't know the ripples that you're creating. And I think that this has turned into uh, a tidal wave. Yeah, John, very, very briefly, from your point of view, how long will it last? I think this is going to be going through the winter. I think it's going to be going through the 2012 elections. And I think that uh, the Democratic Party or uh, certain other factions that hope to co-opt this uh, movement are going to uh, find a lot of resistance. All right. That was John Wellington Ennis, filmmaker and contributor to the Huffington Post. John, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Yulia.